Welcome to the African Campfire Stories podcast, a podcast dedicated to African history. Our website is www.africancampfirestories.com. We are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. To get the latest on new episodes or other history content, please follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Search for African Campfire Stories. To spread awareness of African history, help by sharing word of this podcast with friends and other people you know. African History Quickies, Episode 8, Ethiopia Defeats Italy, Part 3. In the previous two episodes of the Ethiopia Defeats Italy series, we have introduced the key players and the complicated geopolitical and colonial games they were playing. We have covered some fighting in the series, but none of the fighting between Ethiopia and Italy. On this episode, we will begin covering the battles between the two antagonists of our story. If you consult history books, they will most likely tell you that the first Italo-Ethiopian war took place in 1895 and 1896, with the seminal Battle of Adwa being the crowning moment in that war. However, fighting between these two countries began before 1895. The previous episode of this series explained how Italy found herself in Eritrea, on that episode, we stated that Italy went into Eritrea to replace the Egyptians. We also explained that both the Italians and the Ethiopians, based on agreements that each of them made separately with Britain, thought that Eritrea was theirs. So, it was on the 5th of February 1885, the Italians landed in Massawa, situated in Eritrea, to replace the Egyptians. The Ethiopians were obviously not going to be happy about this. Before we jump headlong in the upcoming conflict, remember we've stated in this series that in 1876 the Ethiopians defeated the Egyptian forces of Ismail Pasha the Magnificent, the ruler of Egypt and Sudan. The Egyptians were then forced to pull out of Sudan in 1882 due to the Mahdi revolt in Sudan. The man who was the emperor of Ethiopia at the time, Johannes IV, was a very busy man. He defeated Ismail in the 1870s. After that, he had to deal with the followers of Mahdi, whom he also defeated in the 1880s. The Mahdi is not a key player in this story, but we have made mention of the Mahdi so much in this series that the laws of storytelling demand that we at least explain him briefly. So, here's a short detour on the Mahdi. Mahdi is an Arabic word that translates to something like the rightly guided one. The Mahdi is a messiah figure in some Islamic traditions who will appear in the end times to fight evil and injustice. It is said in some traditions that the Mahdi will arrive alongside Jesus Christ to bring about the kingdom of God. So, as you can see, one must be a confident person indeed to call oneself the Mahdi. Muhammad Ahmad Abd Allah is the person that did just that. He proclaimed himself the Mahdi and then proceeded to fight a holy war against the occupation forces of Egypt. In what is known to history as the Mahdist War of 1881 to 1899. This conflict, the concept of the Mahdist holy war, also extended to include fighting between the Mahdist followers and the Ethiopians, which is where we were in our story before we took a detour to explain the Mahdi. Now back to our main story. While the Mahdi was turning his wars into religious conflicts, the Ethiopians would not be outdone. The wars of Emperor Johannes IV were presented to the Ethiopian people as holy wars. Wars meant to defend the Ethiopian Orthodox Christian faith against the forces of Islam. This played into the Ethiopians' already existing belief that theirs was a special and holy country. We will provide a summary history of Ethiopia and their Orthodox Christianity in the next episode. Episode 3 of our Christmas and Hanukkah special contains some aspects of Ethiopian religious history. But when it came to holy war, the Italians would not be outdone either. Their desire for conquest also had religious overtones. 
You just gotta love it when both the opposing parties in an upcoming war are full of extreme self-belief and self-confidence. It's also a comedy of history that many times countries that go to war with each other usually have had a mutually beneficial relationship in the past. When Ethiopia was fighting against the Mahdist forces, she would sometimes request and obtain weapons from the Italians. But sometimes Ethiopia would side with the Mahdist and take a stance against Italy. Now, dear listener, the fighting starts, and for real this time. In January 1887, in a village called Sati, the Italians defeated the Ethiopians. Ouch, <laughs> there goes the opening round. But crazily enough, the Ethiopians ended up surrounding the Italians. How do you defeat someone and end up being surrounded by the same person you just defeated? Historians blame the numbers of the Ethiopians for this situation. Apparently, there were too many Ethiopians. Okay, but it means the Ethiopians weren't defeated yet then, right? This is confusing. In any case, what isn't confusing is that other Italian military forces then set out to free their mates who were now surrounded by the Ethiopians. On the way there, well, these Italian forces never got there. Another group of Ethiopians, led by Ras Alula, ambushed this group of Italians with just spears. Some balls, right? What followed is known to history as the Battle of Dogali. With the Italians apparently running from a smaller hill to a taller hill, I suppose they were running from hill to hill at this point. They eventually ran out of ammunition. At this point, the Ethiopians pounced and gave the Italians a bloody nose. The surviving Italians fled to the Red Sea coast. Remember that the people who played a large role in getting the Italians and Ethiopians at each other's throats were the British. At this point, the British were panicking and paranoid, afraid that Italy might actually lose this war. To prevent this travesty, the British then called Italy and Ethiopia to a peace conference. So, does this mean that the war between Italy and Ethiopia was over? It possibly could have been over at this point. Except for the fact that the Italians got a little naughty. They thought they could obtain through a fake peace agreement what they couldn't obtain through fighting on the battlefield. By this time, Emperor Johannes IV had died. So, this fake peace agreement was signed by Emperor Menelik II on the 2nd of May 1889. Menelik, as stated on the first episode of this series, is the man who will lead the Ethiopians to final victory. So, now all the key pieces of what historians call the First Italo-Ethiopian War are now in place. On the next episode of this series, we will explore how the Italians fooled the Ethiopians into a fake peace agreement and how the Ethiopians reacted when they found out that they had been duped. After the defeat of the Battle of Dogali, the Italians adopted a careful approach to dealing with the Ethiopians. But things are about to turn great for the Italians, as they will take over city after city from the Ethiopians. Check out this and more on the next episode. This is the end of today's episode.